Welcome back to Simple C10, and on today's episode, we're going back to the basics. This is Air Ride 101. So even though I try to keep it simple, sometimes with air ride, when you're trying to put together the perfect combination of air ride parts, it can get overwhelming. When you hear things like drop member and Z frame and cut lowers and some of the things that just normal people that build here all the time, if you're new to this and you hear those things and you're not sure, this episode is for you. I'm going to share everything that I know about these trucks. So stay tuned. This is going to be fun and uh, hopefully you'll learn something. All right, guys, buckle in because this is going to be a ton of information. But what I want to say is don't get overwhelmed with all the information. I'm going to break down at the end exactly what it takes me to bag the trucks the way that I do, some suggestions for you with your build. But the most important thing before bagging a truck is you have to have a vision and a plan for what you want to do. You can't have a vision in mind of your truck laying rocker on the ground, but yet you go out and buy a mini notch and some of the basic add-on kit. That's not gonna work. But also, don't be buying a drop member and all the other things that you may need to lay your truck out when you're, you're only wanting a static drop. Or maybe you, from the beginning, you didn't wanna lose inner fenders and you didn't wanna raise your bed floor, but yet you go out and buy everything that you need to lay it completely out. You do not have to do that. So it's important for you to understand how low you wanna go, what's your budget, and then kind of what the work that you're wanting to put into it, and also your timeline, right? If you're cramming a month before show season and you just want to have a little air ride, but you don't want to take out fenders and all that other stuff, maybe just a simple bolt-in kit like I did on blue would work for you. So I get this question a lot, what kit do you use? What air kit? And it's from airslamit.com, and it is their Simple C10 kit. And I'm going to put a link in the description as well. So this kit comes with two compressors, a tank, the Airlift 3P system, the four bags, all the fittings, and everything you need besides the cups and the notch for the back. So all the things that we just talked about comes in one kit, and that kit is under $2,000, and that includes the Airlift 3P system, which is a killer deal because if you went out and bought that system alone, that is a $1,500 system, and you're getting everything you need for less than $2,000. So Air Slamming has been awesome. I don't know what you've heard about them or whatever you've read online, but this is the sixth truck that I've installed Air Slamming on, and they've been nothing but the best. And also, they're supporting my next build, and that just shows how their customer service is, how much they want to support the community. Check out Air Slam It. If you are on a budget, but you still want quality parts and you want everything all together and not have to piece together a million different things, then try out Air Slam It. You can find all kinds of air ride kits online. Some of them have everything you need. Some of them have different parts. Some of them have smaller lines. There's a lot of different things to think about whenever you're buying a kit. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. So sometimes online I see people asking for air management systems. Like, hey, what air management system do you use? Do you use AccuAir or Airlift 3P or what do you use? And a lot of the times when I'm seeing the question, like what air management kit you use, people are just posting regular valve manifolds and just regular kits. So an air management system is a system that actually, like it says, manages your air system. So it is either pressure or height related. So the Airlift 3P that I use that's pressure, on the controller it has the pressure of all four corners. So what I can do is set my ride height to pressures and program it and it manages my air. And that's also my pressure switch in my Airlift 3P system. So when the tank reaches a certain PSI, it turns the compressors off. An air management system is really a computer controlled system that allows you to press a button and manages your air for you. And a lot of these other non-air management systems, you have to manually hit a valve 
to try to level your truck out. So you never exactly know that it's where you want it um, unless you have a pressure gauge and you try to guesstimate what, what level is. All right, like I said, we're getting back to the basics. So here is your basic air ride setup. So as you can see on the picture beside me, this is the key components. Okay, so let's start off with the compressors. This is what compresses the air into the tank. A lot of people will use two compressors, some use one. You can use as many as you want. The important thing is, is that these compressors are hooked to the battery and they're also hooked to a pressure switch. So when the tank reaches a certain pressure, it's gonna kick the compressors off. So that's how it controls when they turn on or turn off is by a pressure switch. So as the compressors are pumping air into your tank, that's the next thing I'm gonna talk about. A lot of people use a five gallon tank, it's very basic. But some people use two, two and a half gallons if you have a saddle tank set up. Or some people might use an even larger tank. But remember, the size of your tank may hold more air, but it's gonna take longer for the compressors to fill that tank up. So you might have compressors just that just continuously run and run without ever shutting off. So we've got the compressors compressing air into the tank. The next step, is that tank has to go to a valve. So the valve is what's gonna open or close to allow air to go to the bag or to escape the bag. If we're just talking basic valves, you can see what that looks like here. A basic valve is just one valve that open and closes. And in order for you to have front, back, side to side, that means all four wheels can go up and down, you've gotta have two valves per wheel. So that's gonna be eight. As you can see in the picture, once you get a bunch of valves, like eight valves all teed up together, kind of looks complicated, but that's one way that you can do it. It's a less expensive way. Another way that you can do it is a valve block. So a valve block, what it does is it will combine all those valves together into one block. So it's um, a lot less room that you take up, a lot less fitting, so less leaks and then you plug all your wheels into the one valve block and it has your open and your close from the valve block. So that's a really good option. And the option that I like the best is what I commonly use is the Airlift 3P system. You can get a lot of different options, but it's a valve block that also have a, has an air management system worked into it. So you plug all your lines directly into the valve block and then it also has a computer that runs up to your switches. So that's what I want to talk about next is your switches. So what does a switch do? A switch is going to open and close that valve to allow the air out of your bag to inflate or deflate. So whenever I was in high school, what was really cool, and I still like the look of them now, is a switch box. You can see that in the picture here. A switch box just has all your different switches that are ran directly to the valve or the valve block. And you just manually click those switches to hit different uh, wheels up and down. There's a switch for front up and down, rear up and down, left, right, whatever kind of configuration that you have, that's what a switch box does. Now, if you have an airlift three piece system like I have, then your controller is what's gonna control the different switches. So that controller is plugged into your valve block. So as you press the controls on the controller, it's telling the computer what valves to open and to close. So another way that you can control your air ride is a paddle valve. This is as basic as you can get. You're running the line directly from your airbag up to a switch into the cab. And when you open it, it physically opens your air line so air escapes or it fills up. Now this is the slowest setup that you can have because the air has to manually go through the valve. This may be the slowest option but it's also the least expensive option out of it all. A lot of the basic setups that you see are paddle valve setup so pay attention to that. If you don't want super slow bags where it takes forever to go down you're going to want to go with a valve block or um, individual valves or a airlift manifold or something like that. So the compressor sends air to the tank and then the valves is what allows the air from the tank to fill the bag or to escape the bag. But now is the bag. So um, you're always going to need four bags if you're doing four corners. And as that air fills the bag, it's going to inflate, it's going to lift up, 
and obviously as you hit the button down, it's gonna go down. So as far as components, that's pretty much it. You've got the compressors, the tank, the valves, the bags, the switch box. So there's really not a lot that goes to this air ride stuff, but there's a lot of components that it takes to install that air ride on your vehicle, depending on how low that you wanna go. So that's what I wanna focus on next, is what components does it take to actually lay out a C10 truck? So in this second part, I wanna start off first with the front of the truck and the components it takes to lay out the front of these trucks. And a couple of the things that people say, maybe you've heard the phrase, do you have cupped lower control arms? So you can see in the picture, what this is, is a cup that you weld into the bottom of your control arm to allow the bag to bolt directly to your control arm. If you don't have a cup lower, what happens is whenever the bag compresses on the control arm, it will limit itself when the bag is deflated to a certain amount. But if you lower the bag lower into the control arm mounted directly to it, then it will allow your control arm to go further up and actually get you about two more inches of a drop whenever you're bagging these trucks. So what I use is the VelaWorks front do-it-yourself slam kits from their DTC series. And what that does is it comes with the top bag bracket and the cup lower. So you get both of those things. The top bag bracket is adjustable and also that lower cup has some adjustability in it. And the new one you'll see soon has two drain ports, one that you put in the front and one for the rear. And it's etched into their DTC series logo. So if you're interested in the VelaWorks do-it-yourself slam kit, go back and watch the black dice build. Step-by-step step, I go through installing those cups, installing the bag brackets, the rear do-it-yourself slam kit, all the things that VelaWorks offers. So you can go back and watch that video and figure out how to do it yourself. Also, the link for VelaWorks is in the description, and if you use the code SIMPLEC10, you're gonna save 10% off. So the next thing I wanna talk about is control arms. If you're not gonna cup your lowers, then what you're gonna need is a set of control arms. So a control arm will do the same thing as cupping your bottom, but also that is like $1,000 compared to a couple hundred for the front do-it-yourself slam kit. But there are some perks that come with having a set of control arms. For instance, there's a couple companies, Porterbilt being one, that has control arms that are actually narrowed one inch that gives you more of a tire clearance and also forward one inch that centers your wheel in the wheel well. A lot of people know when you bag a C10 on stock components, that wheel is a little bit further back in the wheel well and some people want it to be exactly centered. So that's one of the things that you can do with those control arms that are narrowed and forward an inch. So there's a lot of different companies that make control arms. You have Porterbilt, Chop and Block, Michigan Metalworks, CPP, POL. All those companies make different types of control arms for your truck. So you're gonna need control arms or cup lowers, but you're also gonna need disc brakes and drop spindles. So most of you know that these trucks come with drum brakes. And one of the upgrades that you have to do first before going with lowering spindles is you've got to transition to a disc brake setup so you can have that drop spindle. They don't make drop spindles for drums, so go ahead and plan to just go with disc brakes. As far as safety and everything else, that's the way to go anyway. You can get a disc brake kit for about a thousand dollars. AZ Pro Performance has some. Any kind of website that you go to is going to have a disc brake set up. And a lot of people ask, should I convert to five lug or six lug? For me, I always keep six lug because I run transport wheels, which are a six lug. But five lug does have a lot more wheel options. So if a five lug wheel option is what you want, then go ahead and transition to five lug in the front and swap out the back axles if that's something you wanna do at this time. Again, it goes back to planning out your build, knowing what kind of wheels, knowing your exact vision for the truck, so when you're buying stuff, you don't get stuck in a place of where you really love these wheels, but didn't realize they're only in five lug and didn't think of that and already bought all this stuff for it. So the only thing I have left 
about drop spindles to say is some people have trouble with three inch lowering drop spindles on 15 or 16 inch wheels. So I always say stay on the safe side, go with two and a half inch drop spindles and you should be good to go. I do have a link to a disc brake kit in the description, so check that out. So I just got a question earlier today is what kind of shocks are you using for the front? So if you're gonna bag a truck like I have no association bagged or some of my other, I have cup lowers and I have two and a half inch spindles and then all I get is a CPP three inch drop shock and that works perfect. When the wheel is all the way compressed, all the way up, it's got about this much more clearance in the shocks. So VillaWorks has a shock relocator kit that will locate the top of the shock on top of the frame. So it gives you a little bit more travel in the shock. That's an easy upgrade. Um, I just used the factory right now, but he's sending for the new truck. He is sending the shock relocators. Hey, the more travel with the shock, the better with air ride. So whatever you feel more comfortable with, if you want to use the factory shock position with a three inch drop shock, or maybe you want to go with one of these ride tech shocks that has the different mount. Hey, whatever fits your build and your budget, they're both going to work great. Um, some of the higher end stuff, obviously you get what you pay for with some of that, but also when you're on a budget, those are some of the things that will work for now. And if you ever want to upgrade in the future, you could. So here's a few more shock options if you're looking into those. I'll also link some in the description as well. So just in case you're wondering, if you have cup lowers, two and a half inch drop spindles, then you're gonna get as low as no association, which is about this far from laying out the front. The control arms actually hit before the cross member does. So what you're gonna need to do is a few different options here. The first one and the one that I'm probably gonna do in the future is a drop member. So what a drop member does is make all your front suspension stuff up it drops it just a little bit where your control arm will lay all the way out. So there's a few different companies that offer drop members. You've got Porterbilt, GSI, Rideman Ranch, you've got CA Chassis Works, a lot of different companies, and they all offer some really great products. I've been speaking to Rideman a little bit here lately, and I can't wait. We're gonna to partner together on something in the future, so pay attention to that, but I'm excited to be able to do a drop member. And that's just a few that offer this drop member. So that is a take off your current cross member and then bolt up their full kit and you've got it dropped all the way in the front. Now that may sound easy. There's a few other things you have to do with steering and a few other components, but that's about the easiest way that you can bolt on a drop member on the front and lay out the front of your truck without a ton of fab. So the other option you have is zing the frame. So what that is, is cutting off the whole front of your frame, raising it up enough to lay the truck out and welding it all back together. So if you're a fab guy, this has got to be one of the cheaper ways to do the whole process, but it also just seems intimidating, right? Cutting the front of your frame off and welding it all back together. But I've seen a lot of Z trucks that just look absolutely awesome. So if you have the experience, you have a welder, that may be one of the best options for you. So the other option is pancaking the cross member or sectioning the cross member. So what you're gonna do is take out your factory cross member and you are gonna cut it. You can see in the pictures here, you're gonna take a section of it out, weld it all back together. So that makes all your steering components go up. So all your control arms and all that is gonna go up. You'll move some of your steering shafts around, but that's gonna move everything up and drop that cross member down. So again, if you can make some cuts, there's some great videos online about how to do this. So you can follow along with those videos. Maybe one day I'll do one of those. So check out some of the videos online if this is something you feel comfortable with and chop it up, drop it down. So. Again, that's one of the options if you are on a budget and you've got the fab experience or maybe you're just wanting to try something. You've got an extra cross member laying around you want to cut and try, go for it. So the next step in bagging one of these trucks is a trailing arm cross member. So this is a cross member that holds the trailing arms, but some of the modifications that you're going to have to do to it 
is where the drive shaft goes through the hoop, you're gonna have to either cut the top of the cross member and weld in a hoop like the picture here, or you can go with a aftermarket um, trailing arm cross member from Tim Works Fabrications, from POL, from React. There's a lot of different companies that offer this trailing arm cross member that has the larger hoop in the middle so the drive shaft doesn't hit it. Somebody I'm partnering with on the next build is Tim Works Fabrications. He offers one of these trailing arm cross members with a bigger hole. It actually has the exhaust cutouts as well. And what I love about Tim Works uh, cross member is when you take out the old one, his cross member has two mounts that mount to the side and then you mount the middle. Some of these trailing arm cross members that are just one piece, it is a pain to try to wiggle that thing in there and bolt it in in one piece. But if you can bolt the sides in and then bolt the middle section in, that's just a lot easier and a way better design. And uh, I look forward to using one of those on my next build. So speaking of trailing arms, if you're gonna leave the stock trailing arms, you can lay one of these trucks out on stock trailing arms but you're gonna to have to move where the bag is mounted. So on no association, I have the bag mounted in the factory spring location with a four inch block, and I'll talk about that in just a second. And mine's about, again, this far from laying out in the back, but it's level with the front without a drop member. But if you wanna upgrade those trailing arms, again, Tin Works Fabrication offers an aftermarket trailing arm that looks awesome. Check this thing out. This thing looks sick and it's adjustable. You can just tell the fabrication on that thing is awesome. So if you want a cool look, you can upgrade those um, trailing arms to a Tinworks trailing arm. You can also mount the bag directly to the trailing arm from Tinworks, mount it to the frame like I have it on No Association, or what you can do is move the bag placement either over the axle or move it further down on the trailing arm and make a bracket and it'll lay the truck out in the rear on factory trailing arms. Most of the time you see people using a four link and all a four link does is get rid of your factory trailing arms and allows the rear end to have four points of contact. So um, whenever it's moving around, it has four bars that are connected to the frame that keeps it centered. So I mentioned just a minute ago a four-inch block. So VelaWorks has a rear do-it-yourself slam kit that comes with the block to put on your trailing arm and longer U-bolts. So if you're running 22s, you can use a four-inch block. It's actually a little bit more than four inches. It's the largest block that's available on the market. If you try to find a four inch block. There's only like one other company that makes it. And what's cool about the VelaWorks do it yourself rear kit is you can cut down that block to whatever size you need. So if you're running smaller wheels, you'll want that block to be smaller so you can cut it down. Or if you're running 22s, you can use the full block like I did on no association and black dice. And what this does is pushes your rear end up to go further into the notch with using your factory trailing arms. So the other thing on doing your rear setup is you're gonna need either a panhard bar or a watts link. So a panhard bar is good if you're gonna have four or less inches of travel on your rear end. A lot of bolt-in setups will have an adjustable panhard bar because there's not as much movement. Now on no association, I did use a 16 inch panhard bar from Summit and I have more than four inches of lift and my rear end will go left to right about a quarter of an inch. It's not a ton, but also I don't ride with my truck all the way lifted up and all the way slammed all the time. I've set that panhard bar to a good low ride height and everything is working fine with it. Now on Crockett and on Black Dice, I ran a KP Components Watts link and I love that thing. If I can suggest anything, go with the Watts link. I know the Panhard bar is cheaper and it worked and I've seen a lot of people use those and they work fine. But the Watts link, what is beautiful about it, having a bar on both sides at any ride height that you travel, your rear end is going to be perfectly centered at all times. So 
um, just having that certainty and that peace of mind, especially if you've got some horsepower that you're running that may twist that rear end, um, then I would just go with the Watts Link. It's about $500 for the KP Components Watts Link. Or the, uh, Jason Venata from Venata Fabrications, he's got a $300 Watts Link um, from a guy from eBay, and he installed that on his truck. So there's actually a video if you want to check that out. Uh, Venata Fabrications of the Watts Link. So check that out. That's another great option. That's a weld on option when the KP Components Watts Link is mostly all bolt on. So now the notch. There's a couple different things. You've heard of a mini notch, which is just a small notch into the frame, or you can go with a step notch. So a step notch or a monster notch, a lot of people call it a lot of different names. Um, the step notch name comes from where it kind of steps down in the frame. The frame's wider and then it steps into a narrower frame. So that's where the step notch comes from. Uh, most people have a nine inch step notch if you want to lay your truck completely out. I think that size will go all the way up to 24s um, that'll lay out. A ton of people have this step notch available. VeloWorks has one available. TenWorks Fabrication has one available. Um, if you're going with the VeloWorks front and rear do-it-yourself slam kit, go ahead and get the shock relocators and get the notch as well. Just get it all and use the code SIMPLEC10, get it all together. Um, if you're going to go with the TenWorks mini notch and the trailing arms, then go ahead and grab his notch. You know, just get it all in a kit to save yourself a little shipping, but both of those are high quality things that you can use. So we're talking shocks in the back. So what I do on no association is I'll take the lower factory shock mounts and I'll flip them so the shock is mounted to the outside of the frame. And then I'll use some of these shock relocators and I'll bolt those into the side of the frame as you can see in the picture. That was like a super simple setup. Now, if you don't want to buy the shock mounts for the top, you can fab some of those up like Zach did on Black Dice. He just fabbed up some, welded them, got the shock mounted correctly. Super easy to do. You can also, if you're going with the mini notch from Tenworks, then just get their shock relocator uh, kit for the back. And it works really well. It bolts up to the bottom of the trailing arm and then comes with a new mount on the side of the frame that gives you that perfect angle of the shock. And that's all you need for a mini notch. So get that. I use that on my blue build. So one random fact, whenever you bag these trucks, if you're going to lay it out, if you're on more than a mini notch, you're going to need to get your drive shaft shortened about an inch. Now don't take my word for it that it's an inch because every setup is different. You're going to want to measure. There's videos online of how to measure. You measure center to center with your drive shaft yoke pushed all the way in and give that information to your drive shaft guy and tell him what you did. Um, on three of my trucks, I've had to have the drive shaft shortened an inch. But similar to the front with the drop member, you can also get a complete back half that has the notch, the bags over axle, the four link, and all that stuff from some of the companies that I mentioned before. Uh, Rideman Ranch has an awesome complete back half that actually has the hole that you can run the exhaust out the side of the frame in the rear. Really, really love that setup. It's one of my favorite ones right now. But GSI, Porterbilt, both are just killing it with back halves. So again, it goes back to what your budget is, what you can accomplish, what you're willing to do, um, what kind of fabrication skills you have. A lot of the back halves are just bolt-in back halves. You cut the frame, you bolt it all in, and you've got the back done. Like it doesn't get much more simple than that if you've got the money to go that route. I would love to one day have a front and a back half and I may have it or just even a full frame. That would be really cool. But for now, I'm going to keep doing what's simple, what works and share that information with you. So I hope some of this has helped kind of clarify what you need to do. No, it won't answer all the questions, but I hope it kind of explains some of the language that we use, some of the vocabulary about what things mean just kind of the breakdown of the basic things that you need to, to run air ride on your truck. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. It's at simple.c10. I'm on Facebook, Travis Summers, Simple C10 on Facebook. I love to help out. I love to do this kind of stuff.
So the last minute of this video, I'm going to break down no association really quick. The front has two and a half inch drop spindles and disc brakes, has CPP lower control arms that have the bump stop cut off of those, transport wheels in the front with cut out inner fenders, CVF hood hinges. I've got a modified trailing arm cross member with the hoop cut out and welded in. I'm on factory trailing arms that have the VelaWorks do-it-yourself rear slam kit from their DTC series installed on there. I've got a 16 inch Speedway adjustable pan hard bar. I've got some Amazon top shock brackets that I installed on there. I have a Boyd tank in the back, an airlift three piece system from airslamit.com, their simple C10 kit and Snowden seat, Dakota digital gauges, vintage air. I've got all the things that's really come together. So thank you guys again for just the support, for the views, for the shares, all the encouragement. So take all this information, make a list, get motivated, go out there and finish your truck, man, and tag me in the pictures. I love to see progress. I love to just root you on. I love to see people build their dream trucks. And let's ride.